टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर नैनोमेट्रिक सरफेस फिनिश इस स्लाइड्स चेंजिंग नो मैडम ओके फर्स्ट स्लाइड वी कैन सी इट मैडम जस्ट टू मिनट्स हां इज इट चेंजिंग नाउ या चेंजिंग मैडम ओके क्विकली आई विल इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम वर्किंग एट सीएसआईओ एज अ सीनियर साइंटिस्ट इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ऑप्टिकल डिवाइसेस एंड सिस्टम डिवीजन I joined CSIO as a scientist in year 2012, and before that, I was working as a uh, quick hire scientist fellow. My field of specialization is optomechanical instrumentation, and my broad research domains are optical system design and fabrication of optics modules for soft X-rays, infrared optical element, and further uh, molecular dynamic simulation based modeling. Ultra precision machining of optics, improving the figure and the finish accuracies in the nanometric range, optical metrology, smart materials, and precision engineering. These are my broad research domains, and I'm also working here as an assistant professor in Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research, which is an academy of CSIR, teaching postgraduate and doctoral uh, academic activities. and further i'm also associated as a faculty member in uh, indo swiss training center uh, giving hands on session to the diploma courses is there any problem in the screen sir no madam some of the persons are uh, drawing something i think so okay okay yeah, no issues uh, i cleared it sir uh so briefly uh, to begin with it i will introduce about what csir is about uh, many people may not not be aware of csir itself so csir is a, a council of scientific and industrial research uh, having a pan india presence the csir it has a dynamic network of uh, 39 national laboratories with 37 outreach centers and innovation complexes so it consists of a networks of lab under various domains like engineering sciences information sciences physical sciences chemical sciences and biological sciences and uh, csir r&d expertise and experience is uh, it comprises of around 3500 active scientists supported by 8000 scientific and the technical staff it covers a wide spectrum of science and technologies ranging from radio and space physics to nanotechnology bio biotechnology aeronautics instrumentation environmental engineering information technology so it covers almost all the areas uh, of science uh, the brief introduction about uh, about csio that is central scientific Instru instrument organization the mandate of my institute is basically research design and development of scientific and industrial instruments for societal strategic and high science application the core strength of this institute are basically opto avionics that is developing of optic instrumentation for avionics uh, components holographic aspheric freeform and diffractive optics and photonics sensor actuator and computational instrumentation seismic instrumentation biomedical and agro instrumentation uh, we also uh, have the mtech as well as the phd program under acsir which is academy of scientific and innovative research which provide which provides full fledged mtech as well as phd degree uh, of uh, for various engineering as well as physical sciences domain so uh, the, the key areas and the technologies of csir csio in the recent times are uh, recently we have been associated uh, or developed various instrumentation technologies for sustainable agriculture as well as for aviation sector technologies for smart cities technologies for healthcare so quickly i will go through the various technologies which have uh, developed in the recent past uh, by csir csio uh, like instrumentation for sustainable agriculture uh, we have developed tractor mounted uh, soil variability mappers pesticide uh, spray nozzle device and uh, e nose multi grain moisture analyzer as well as tea manufacturing machines 
further uh, we uh, we have a dedicated team of scientists working for instrumentation for healthcare also so we have various technologies developed for the healthcare domain like exoskeleton devices myoelectric arm head gesture manual wheelchair customized implant depending uh, upon the requirement of the patient or the doctors postural stability analysis design and development of low vision aid for visually impaired and uh, one of the latest is the divinen uh, which is a blind reader uh, reader machine for the blind persons which can read language in almost 7 to 8 uh, languages Uh, further uh, in instrumentation for healthcare we have developed linear accelerator which is installed also at mumbai and uh, portal imaging device cephalogram and laser lithotripsy system we are also into the instrumentation for smart city like uh, early detection of earthquake for delhi uh, earthquake for the delhi metro and recovery of the very high cost mof products from the waste batteries Uh, we are also working on the recycling of the base cfl water quality monitoring as well as electrical energy parameters mon uh, monitoring the uh, the main uh, area of csio is basically optics instrumentation so we extensively work for the instrumentation for navy as well as the military aviation at csio so these are our flagship projects in which we are associated with it right now like scan laser 3 see through displays uh, amlc amlcd see through uh, displays for fighter aircraft as well as for air force as well as for navy and military aviation display test platforms and uh, various components optical components associated with these displays like optical thin film coated lens beam combiners aspheric free form lenses for this uh, display systems uh this is head of display we are also associated with the uh, various other parts of the aircraft like aircraft exterior as well as the ship deck lighting um we uh, are into design and development of the drogue as well as the probe lights for aircraft for refueling into the air anti collision lights for the aircraft and led based nvg compatible fin as well as wing navigation light and taxi as well as the landing light i will be discussing about few in my coming slides so one of the another uh, major domain is the precision machining we are associated with we can machine almost all kinds of metals glass and plastics and can generate all kinds of shapes whether it is flat window spherical aspheric and free form or any ruggedized assembly uh, required for any optical instrumentation so we work for the different areas like infrared optics strategic application aviation and space optics ophthalmics like development of intraocular lenses contact lenses mold inserts etc we are also into the coating techniques different kinds of uh, coating uh, facilities we are equipped with to uh, develop flat or uniform or a graded index response so we can develop uh, or we are developing different kinds of interference filters like anti reflective band pass band bridge neutral density filter notch filters rugged filters for different strategic as well as the societal applications so uh, the main area in which i am associated with it's basically the optical instrumentation now as we are all aware of the very basic optical instrumentation like microscope telescope cameras spectacles binoculars uh, contact lenses film projector and the human eye which is also the best example of the optical instrument so what if we think about what they have got in common is the lens so all these optical instruments they comprises of a lens which can be a plano convex bi concave plano concave or it can be of any shape so lens is the most critical part of any optical uh, instrument so uh, there are various uh, challenges associated with the uh, fabrication of the lenses uh, like uh, conventional 
conventional lenses are normally uh, spherical or flat in shape so uh, uh, so for making this lenses uh, conventional lenses uh, there is certain fabrication process involved so the basic process is uh, comprises of these five uh, five steps that is slitting trepanning grinding followed by polishing and then coating so uh, conventional lenses means which are of very uh, normal in shape which are not of integrated shapes not complex shapes uh, shapes and which are used in the conventional optical systems like it can be a flat or spherical so first is the slitting slitting basically refers to cutting of the glass material into a manageable sizes the very bulk or large pieces of glass they are converted into the required shapes and sizes by the process known as the slitting it is basically done with the two kinds of tools like it can be a diamond tipped glass cutter tool which is used for cutting very small and thin glass sheets or it can be done with the help of a diamond wheel which is used for very thick and large glass sheets so this is a diamond tipped glass cutter tool which is normally used for cutting very thin as uh, thin uh, glass sheets uh, so this process is known as slitting and um, whereas these are the uh, grinding wheel which are used for the uh, these are the wheels diamond wheels which are used for the uh, slitting of very uh, large as well as the bulk uh, glass so uh, this can be done either by slicing that is longitudinal cut for a longer pieces or it can be done by dicing that is the horizontal cut for square or near square pieces now after slitting the process is called the trepanning that is all the lenses they are made of certain uh, they are of required uh, diameter uh, or or the size so trepanning basically refers to the cutting of the glass blanks into the circular shape for further processing so different sizes of trepanning tools are available for various size of the lenses so converting of the glass blanks into the circular shape uh, is basically the trepanning process trepanning is further followed by the grinding grinding is basically nothing but it's the uh, selective removal of the material from the trepan uh, component to generate the required radius of curvature as we all are aware that uh, lens is nothing but to focus uh, the beam to get a, a magnified image or to focus the beam at a particular point for any application basically the uh, role of the lens is to focus the beam or to magnify the beam so it uh, any lens uh, comprises of the radius of curvature so this radius of curvature is normally uh, generated by the grinding process which is the selective removal of the material as we can see this is the uh, trepanned uh, glass component and these are the grinded with a uh, desired radius of curvature this radius of curvature changes uh, depending upon the application so uh, this is basically the grinding process in which uh, the different uh, components they are uh, mounted by the pitch into a blank uh, which is normally known as the grinding tool and they are uh, the material removal is done by the use of the abrasives of the particular or required sizes and material is removed in a very controlled way now after grinding uh, the final mechanism or the final process is the polishing Uh, because the uh, lens cannot be used if it is opaque so it has to be very clearer and transparent to make the grinded lens transparent a polishing is the process which is used polishing is very similar to grinding but there is a difference in the size of the abrasive and the material removal rate is very low as compared to the uh, grinding so we can see here this is the grinded lens uh, which is opaque not transparent after polishing we get a very transparent lens which can be used for uh, any magnification or focusing the final part of any lens fabrication is the coating so the polished lens has to be coated with a suitable material basically to increase the transmission of the lens so coating is the final stage uh, and it is basically done to make the lens uh, scratch resistance 
It is also done to selectively filter the light passing through it as well as to illuminate the light uniformly. So any optical instrument, if it comprises of any lens, then it coating is the uh, final and it is the required step which has to be performed. So these are the basic steps which are involved in the fabrication of conventional lenses which are used in the conventional optical instruments. So as they are, um, uh, if we uh, as in the present scenario, uh, the optical instruments are used in almost in the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So uh, I've been associated with the precision, uh, development of precision components which are used for optical instruments ranging for the different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrums from X-rays to visible and to IR. So for X-rays, uh, I've been involved in the development of silicon mirrors for synchrotron beamline. For visible uh, aspheric lenses for low vision aid, plastic lenses for see-through displays, taxi and landing reflectors for aircraft, and for infrared region, I'm associated with the development of diffractive optical components for thermal cameras, precision lenses for hotspot detection for infrared microscopy, and uh, development of India laser rod for beam steering optics and precision component for IRST, that is infrared uh, search and track. So for the development of the optical components for the different wavelengths, they are not the conventional optics. So they uh, they are the like advanced optics which are not uh, which are very complex in shapes and cannot be fabricated by the conventional methods. So here what ultra precision machining comes. Ultra precision machining is basically a um, kind of nano machining which is used to generate very complex shapes of the optics which are used for the present uh, optical instrumentation. So as we know that uh, uh, that deterministic high precision methods and finishing methods, they are with the need of the uh, present manufacturing scenario. So the need of ultra precision is basically to improve the interchangeability of the components, to improve the quality control, uh, to produce the components with a very improved roughness as well as the reliability, and also to enhance their fatigue life. So according to the uh, Taniguchi, the machining process, they were classified into three categories. Normal machining, in which the machining accuracy achieved is up to one micron. And uh, precision machining is that in which the machining accuracy is up to 0 0.01 micron, that is up to 10 nanometers. And ultra precision machining is the process in which the machining accuracy is achieved up to 0 0.001 micron, that is up to 1 nanometers. That means we are talking in terms of, uh, we are talking uh, the surface quality in terms of nanometers. So ultra precision machining is also known as the nano machining. So it has various applications like ophthalmics. If you talk about intraocular lenses, contact lenses, mold insert, corneal implants, all these are made by ultra precision machining because of the surface quality requirements. Electro optics like thermal imaging, consumer electronics, these are the an, another area of application of ultra precision machining. The precision mechanical components like biomedical implants, aerospace components, automobile components, all these come under the category of ultra precision machining. Now for the examination of very high uh, resolution images, different kinds of mirrors are used for focusing and for acquiring the images. Like if we talk about instruments like SEM, TEM, they all require precision components. So these are made by some ultra precision air nano machining processes. So uh, broadly, the ultra precision machining processes are classified uh, as diamond machining and ultra precision grinding. Diamond machining can be of various types, like it can be of face turning, it can be of fly, uh, fly cutting, it can be a diamond micro chiseling, 
it can be fast tool servo turning for making the lens slit arrays it can be a slow tool slide turning which is used for making the of axis mirrors for various application and another class of category is the ultra precision grinding the difference between diamond machining and ultra precision grinding is that diamond machining is a single point cutting whereas grinding is a multi point cutting so always a single point cutting gives a better accuracy than the multi point cutting so a uh, single point diamond turning is a most advanced technique of the ultra precision machining and we at csio have this facility so i will discussing about a uh, single point diamond turning and for what application optical instrumentation it can be used single point diamond turning is nothing but it uh, is a ultra precision machining which uses a single point diamond tool as you can see here it consists of a tool which uh, has a natural diamond and with the help of this we can uh, generate any complex geometry which are do, which are uh, difficult to do by any conventional methods and we can achieve very high accuracy as well as the repeatability and can produce mirror finish that is we are talking of surface quality of less than 10 nanometers and we can produce any kinds of shape whether it is a flat window spherical a spheric free form or any uh, shape uh, any kind of conic section or any free form shape and the disadvantage associated with the grinding is that it cannot be used for soft um, as well as ductile material so uh, single point diamond turning can finish soft ductile materials which are very difficult to polish so different kinds of optics can be generated or manufactured by diamond turning process like free form surfaces hybrid optics and microstructured optics now uh, diamond turning is a process through which we can machine different class of materials like we can machine uh, different types of metals like aluminum and its alloy ofsc copper which is basically oxygen free high conducting copper beryllium copper brass electrolysis nickel these kinds of metals they are used for different applications polymers can also be directly machined by uh, diamond turning i will be discussing in my next slides uh, like acrylic polycarbonate polystyrene and single crystal material which are very difficult to uh, machine but have wide application in electronics and optics like silicon germanium zinc sulfide zinc selenide can be machined by diamond turning now uh, the diamond turning is associated with different types of process parameters which can be classified as controllable as well as the uncontrollable parameters controllable parameters are those which are in the hands of operators like all the machining parameters like tool feed rate depth of cut spindle speed this uh, this we can control and select as per as our requirement but there are certain uncontrollable parameters uh, like which are not in the hands of operators which arises due to the uncertain machining conditions like vibration material swelling suppose i am machining plastic so there is some certain swelling effect like after machining the material swells then it cools down and come back to a different shape so all these are the uncontrollable parameters so these all parameters leads to the certain sources of error uh, which are not required in any uh, nanometric application in any optical instrumentation so uh, we extensively work or do very good research on this how to eliminate these kinds of error and to achieve a very good level of optics which can be used for different kinds of optical instrumentation so i will be discussing one and two uh, parameters that how we have controlled them and how this optimization has led to the uh, fabrication of different optical elements so as i told that diamond turning is a skill de dependent process so it definitely requires an adequate understanding of various factors which decides the outcome so if i talk about machining parameters so the surface quality depends upon the selection of the input parameters like proper combination of process parameters should be there like tool feed rate spindle speed 
nose radius of the tool and depth of cut. So, uh, if we talk about vibration, uh, so signatures of vibration is present in almost all the machining process. So, it, uh, any machining process, whether it is of uh, nanometric uh, level of accuracy, also the vibration signatures they are present. So, our main aim is to minimize these signatures of vibrations. So, in case of diamond turning, the vibration of a tool uh, depends on its extension from the tool holder, which is uh, which we commonly say as tool overhang. So, uh, to optimize this effect of tool workpiece vibration, we have performed a series of experiments by uh, varying the overhang from 8 mm to 27 mm depending upon the tool holder geometry as well as the logistics. So as it can be seen that when we vary the overhang from 8 mm to 14 mm, the surface roughness is uh, uh, roughness is basically uh, improves, like it's reducing, the surface quality is improving. Uh, and uh, when the overhang increases from 14 to 27, the roughness started increasing. So we found that the surface quality is optimum at 14 mm overhang and this can further be seen by the power spectral density that is the frequency spectrum obtained at different overhang. Uh, this is at 8 mm, this is at um, 14 mm and this is at 27 mm. So we can see that very less frequency, uh, random frequencies are present at 14 mm, which leads to an optimum surface quality in comparison with the 8 mm as well as 27 mm. So this is one of the most important parameters through which uh, we can uh, optimize the uh, or reduce the effect of vibration in any optical component. Now, another very important parameter associated with the diamond turning is the tool wear. Uh, it not only affects the surface finish, but it affects the profile. Suppose I'm, I want to achieve a, a radius uh, of a certain dimension. So, if the tool wear is occurring, then we are not able to achieve the radius accurately, as well as surface finish is also deteriorating. So we have studied uh, extensive study how to uh, study the uh, study the effect of tool wear on surface roughness by performing a series of machining operation on silicon substrates, and we divided the machining into a uh, into different fixed time intervals and after each time intervals the diamond tool was inspected for the tool wear and the workpiece we inspected for the surface finish as well as the profile accuracies. So these are the images of the diamond tool. This is an image of a di new diamond tool which is a unused tool and uh, after 50 cycles, after 100 cycles, 150 cycles, 200 cycles and 250 cycles we could determine uh, what is the life of the tool and at what time we should stop machining with that tool so that it should not affect the optical components which we are fabricating. So we lead to a very significant results which have been used for the uh, fabrication of optics further. Another two more important parameters, these are also uncontrollable parameters, dynamic balancing. It plays a very important role in the uh, uh, in maintaining a good profile as well as the surface finish. So if the machine uh, mass is not balanced and it has certain amount of eccentricity from the center rotation, then it leads to certain unbalanced forces, unbalanced centrifugal forces, which further leads to the vibrations. So it is, we did some experiments and this can be seen that due to the presence of the unbalanced condition, the vibration, uh, generation of vibration takes place and it deteriorates the surface roughness as well as the profile accuracy. And effect of chip extraction is also very important to maintain the proper condition around the cutting zone. So the chips has to be properly collected, otherwise it will lead to the formation of certain unwelcome scratches on the uh, optics which we are fabricating. So we have optimized all these parameters for the different class of materials which are used for various applications and uh, we could come out with the various uh, optics which is now being used at various platforms. 
so i will be discussing some of the optics which we have fabricated and now being used at various platforms first is the diamond turning of aluminium reflectors now uh, we have designed as well as developed the led based taxi as well as the landing lights for lca aircraft mark 2 now uh, as we see that uh, in the uh, ground based astronomy aluminium 6061 that is a military grade aluminium it is the most often preferred material because it has very good th uh, good thermal properties and very high specific stiffness which is required for the aerospace application and it is low cost in uh, so that is also the reason why it is preferred so uh, aircraft normally requires two kinds of light for taxiing and landing out of which one, uh, one is installed in the port side of the uh, nose under carriage and the two others are installed on the starboard sides so all aircrafts which are intended i am talking about the fighter aircrafts only all aircrafts intended for night flying are equipped with taxi as well as the landing light the purpose of the taxi as well as the landing light is basically to illuminate the forward zone in the front of the aircraft during taxi and landing so uh, we have replaced the conventional reflectors with the aluminium reflectors which are parabolic in shape these are designed and developed at csio so uh, and these are made by diamond turning process the speciality of these reflectors is that they are parabolic in shape and we have replaced the traditional bulbs with the led lights in the uh, uh, taxi and landing systems so it uh, leads to the improved uh, enhanced uh, brightness and it consumes less power uh, by a factor of 7 to 8 uh, and therefore due to the consumption of less power uh, there is less consumption of the fuel as well as the cost so these are now uh, 10 units of taxi and landing lights they are installed in lca like combat aircraft they are tested and now they are installed so further uh, i am also associated with the diamond turning of plastics for see through displays now initially um, uh, all the see through displays uh, they comprises of the glass optics but nowadays the optical grade plastic it is replacing the glass optics because of the very high refractive index low cost low specific mass and high impact resistance so uh, the use of polymers in optics it provides a very good flexibility to designer as well as the manufacturer so this is basically a head up display which i'm saying as a see through displays which is designed and developed by csio so it be, uh, head up display basically it um, eases the workload of the pilot by displaying the uh, all the flight information uh, or weapon information or any other information associated uh, with it in the windshield of the aircraft and uh, like pilot at the same time is able to see all the symbology on the screen and also able to see, see the outside world so it basically focuses the outside world as well as all the symbology in the infinity so this focusing is done with the help of the optics so uh, so we have tried to replace the glass optics with the uh, plastic aspheric optics which is developed uh, design and developed uh, by my group uh for by ultra precision diamond turning so uh, the greatest advantage of replacing the glass optics uh, with the plastic is that there is a uh, as we are uh, moving from spherical to aspheric then definitely there is a, a reduction in distortion and abrasion and there is a reduction in the weight by 30% so this is was the major achievement in this work and uh, further we are also uh, designing and developing the aspheric lens for visually impaired persons as we know that visual acuity uh, normally refers to the clarity of the vision and visual impairment is one of the major health concern all over the world the person who those who are nearly blind they are associated with the different problems like there is a central field loss and that is inability to recognize any object or face peripheral field loss which leads to difficulty in mo uh, mobility or navigation or it can also lead to overall blur that means there is a blurred vision due to reduced contrast so and we have developed 
a precision manufacturing protocol for the fabrication of plastic lenses which can be used as a low vision aid for the nearly blind person the uh, the drawback with the existing system was that uh, they use the spherical glass magnifier of very high doctor they causes the distortion at the periphery and which reduces the field of the vision so if such type of magnifiers if they were corrected for distortion it leads to multi element in nature and since they were made up of glass and spherical so uh, the entire system become quite heavier and it cannot be wear for a longer time so what we did is that uh, Uh, we uh, replaces or uh, we replace the spherical with the aspheric lenses and glass with the plastic lenses so it le it's like to basically low fatigue factor due to the reduced weight improved performance because of the less distortion and low cost because of replacing the plastic uh, glass with the plastics so we compared the performance by studying the defocusing effect of on the point spread function for a peak to valley for spherical and glass uh, spherical as well as aspheric lenses so it was found that the defocusing effect for the aspheric lenses reduced comparatively and we get a sharper uh, peak showing a less distortion as compared to that of the spherical lenses similarly the weight of the lens was reduced like this is a spherical glass uh, high adapter lenses for use for low vision aid person which is around 14 grams and if we change from aspheric uh, plastic lens so it it was around 3.9 grams so there is a reduction in may, uh, weight by more than one third so leading to definitely less fatigue and can be worn for a longer time to perform their uh, day to day activity so these were the aspheric spectacles which we developed for low vision aids further we are also associated with the diamond earning of the uh, germanium for infrared optics now germanium has wide application in the field of infrared optics night vision goggles thermal imaging systems and high frequency electronics so uh, we uh, have been associated with the development of aspheric diffractive uh, optical elements for thermal imaging so as the conventional lenses are being replaced by the diffractive and aspheric lenses to fulfill the requirement of compact design of the optical system now there's all the optical all the instruments they are becoming small and small and miniaturized so that's why the spherical uh, has switched to aspheric diffractive so the challenge associated with this is the accurate machine control proper selection of the diamond tool and the choice of critical machining parameters uh, not only to achieve a good surface quality but also a very high diffraction efficiency so we developed this germanium aspero diffractive optical element uh, which was to be used for a thermal camera this was the uh, this was a project uh, funded by drdu so we could achieve a surface roughness of 15 nanometer this is a profile of the uh, diffractive optical element fabricated and uh, the step height of the diffractive proof uh, was achieved with the error of 8 nanometers since we are talking about nano machining so error is also in nanometers and the maximum diffractive efficiency we could achieve was 99.57% further scanning electron microscopy was used to analyze the radial rings on the surface to further analyze the steps and surface quality so we are also involved into the development of infrared microscopy for hot spot detection in uh, pcbs printed circuit boards as we are aware that uh, infrared microscopy is a very useful tool for obtaining the specially resolved temperature profile of any fully operational microprocessor so it can be used as a design tool that can greatly aid in a circuit design and optimization of cooling solution so the challenge here was that we did the machining of zinc selenide uh, material uh, it is a very preferred material because it it can be used in the entire ir range and also because of its uh, special properties like it has extremely low bulk optical losses high resistance to the thermal shock and stability in all uh, environments 
so uh, we did the diamond bay design as well as develop a plano convex lens which could be used for infrared microscopy for the detection of the hot spot so finally a plano convex lens was fabricated uh, this is a plano convex lens of zinc selenide and further uh, a setup was made by using a 3d printing which comprises of a smartphone this is a thermal camera and a lens is uh, beyond this uh, phone which is adjusted with the uh, camera of the phone to acquire the images so uh, we could see that with the help of znse fabricated lenses the heated object is observed uh, and a significant uh, quality of magnified uh, image with heat signatures is observed using the fabricated lens further uh, we are also associated with the uh, diamond turning of the silicon which is one of the most difficult material to machine uh, because of its brittleness for the uh, x rays as well as the ir optics for the focusing of the x ray beam and guiding the beam to a particular location so we have optimized and process and uh, to a very good extent we could achieve a crack free surface now since i am talking about nanometric uh, cutting so the things are not usually uh, visible to us so in order to analyze the process uh, we are into molecular dynamic simulation modeling like we use this model to basically analyze the nanometric cutting the changes which are occurring in the material uh, only to a few atomic levels from the surface and also to understand the material removal mechanism so this is the model uh, which we developed for uh, this kind of machining and uh, we could uh, study uh, what are the phase transformation occurring what are the cutting forces existing thrust forces variation of temperature at different uh, points can be studied through this simulation model uh, further uh, we are also into the uh, we are also studying uh, the subsurface damage detection and uh, by using the uh, molecular dynamic simulation like what is the depth uh, we till now we were associated with only the surface finish but there are certain cracks which propagates beneath the surface so measuring those cracks is very uh, difficult and this is the most essential requirement of any optics because if cracks are present then uh, that optics cannot be used at different temperature and pressure conditions like we are talking about air craft the pressure and temperature conditions are entirely different from the normal conditions so if any cracks are present then it will lead to the breakage of optics so we are also into the determination of subsurface damage by using various modeling techniques and characterization tools now as we all are aware of this pandemic covid 19 very recently i have been associated with the design and development of safety goggles to combat covid 19 so we have designed and developed a special kinds of safety goggles protective eye wear uh, which are basically made up of sturdy polycarbonate lenses and uh, they covers the eye and they can uh, almost covers the entire area surrounding area and accommodates also accommodates the prescription glasses these are basically indirect venting and uh, and the quality also complies with the uh, uh, this american standards uh, c87.12010 so we have transferred this technology for the mass production to an industry these are the mechanical design of the goggles as well as the mold and these are the developed goggles uh, by us so these goggles they meet all the physical uh, as well as the chemical requirement like the surface if we talk about the surface it is hydrophobic that is it is water uh, or blood repellent so anything will not stick to that surface and the most important is that it has a luminous transmission uh, greater than 85% which is the requirement uh, of the doctors to wear this goggles for a longer uh, duration ranging from 8 to 15 hours so this has met all the standards 
and uh, these uh, now our few our new frontiers will be in the development of large optics for singleton beam line development of free form optical elements for display systems diamond turning of titanium for aerospace and texturing on diamond tool to improve the machinability so i will uh, this was the work which i have been associated now major r and d facility at csir csir comprises of 3d metal printing we do 3d modeling engineering analysis precision force measurements we have microscopes and x ray imaging analysis like we have afm confocal microscope fecm raman microscope low energy x ray imaging and xrd we also uh, have uh, like chemical uh, particle size spectrometer based analysis like electrochemical workstation dls system drop shape analyzer which is basically the contact angle and fluorescence fluorescence spectrophotometer liquid chromatograph mass spectrophotometer now uh, various facility for optical fabrication we have spdt 3 2 axis 3 axis we have mr mrf machine we have fast tool servo we have a laser interferometer we have aspheric metrology equipment for uh, uh, like conventional fabrication we have centering and edging uh, for smaller lenses we have cmm and uh, polishing machines and other uh, universal test station dry optics and uh, these are the characterization facilities which we have like we have a gonio spectrophotometer laser interferometer uh, led characterization cci coherence correlation interferometers and uh, we also have thermal coating power plants and ion assisted dual uh, beam gun we have five axis grinding six axis polishing so these are some of the equipments which we have at csio and uh, thank you so much if you have any questions you can ask thank you madam uh, thank you for your informative sections thank you sir uh, from participant side if you are having any doubts you can unmute your mic and you can ask you can please unmute your mic and you can ask yes vemuri dr vemuri sir hello yeah pravin tell me okay uh, every year uh, for training or for carrying out mtech uh, and degree and phd degree okay for training we have like every 6 months we have a call for mtech as well as btech training and uh, uh, online applications are invited you have to apply online and uh, on the basis of your application you are shortlisted and you are intermitted so there is some fee also uh, for conducting the training for 6 months it's around like 5000 uh, for 2 months and 10000 for 6 months and for uh, enrolling in mtech and phd program uh, it's like uh, uh, you have to uh, then also every 6 months the uh, for phd every 6 months the calls are open uh, you can apply and you will be shortlisted and called for interview uh, and for mtech it is yearly not on 6 months basis so it's meant uh, you will you can get all the details in the csio website or in the csio websites okay okay ravi kumar can please carry on ravi kumar still any more doubts from the participant side please unmute your mic and you can ask hello yes. hello yes sir are there any job opportunities for uh, btech graduates if it is so what kind of the skill set they should have sorry can you repeat your question please so uh, are there any kind of job opportunities for btech graduates okay 
in electronics and uh, if it is so what kind of uh, skill set they should be possess uh, immediately for btech there is no job opportunities like you are asking for permanent job right yeah it could be permanent job or any kind of internships like in the internships are available as i told uh, earlier also like uh, every 6 months internship call is there it is there in the csr website you have to apply online and on the basis of your application you are shortlisted it's not like everybody who apply is shortlisted uh, on the basis of your like academic uh, academic performance and all uh, not not any written exam is there but uh, they may be asking for your cv and all so on the basis of the shortlist and you can do internship for 6 months if you are shortlisted but job on btech basis uh, presently it is not there if uh, you can frequently visit uh, normally job on mtech basis uh, calls are there not on btech basis okay ma'am thank you still any more participants if you are having doubts you can ask if no doubts we'll conclude the section i think uh, there are no doubts madam so yes, thank you very much madam for accepting and uh, our invitation and uh, giving an informative sections in uh, to through our college madam so yes, sir, of, uh, uh, i would like to add one thing like if you have any students you can ask them to apply because uh, csr labs they have well equipped uh, facilities yes, which will provide a very good exposure to the students and hands on session because normally in colleges we are not exposed to that like we are yes, more into books and uh, more into pcs uh, so but all C- i'm not talking only about csi all csr labs they are very well equipped facilities which can be used and hands on training can be given to the students so, yes madam yes yeah. madam sure madam we'll recommend our students also madam yeah. through this platform so thank so you we have much. labs for all the domains like not only for electronics like mechanical Uh, computer science uh, physical sciences life sciences biology nanotechnology so they can uh, apply for any discipline okay madam yeah. is there any uh, s- specific link to apply that madam or can we uh, see in the website only sir uh, you can ask students to visit csir website or uh, there they can see uh, calls open to all the labs normally they it is highlighted in the csir website okay madam yeah so normally no notification we get normally we visit and we see or if in any, any lab specific then you have to go to that lab website okay madam yeah okay thank you very much madam so on behalf of uh, rice krishna sai prakasham group of institutions i thank you very much madam for uh, giving an informative sections and a very useful uh, section madam for thank the you, sir. thank you madam Okay thank you all of you thank you madam madam can you share the presentation madam uh sir i will mail you will it work yes ma- yes madam yes, sure ma- sir i will mail you okay thank you madam okay thank you, thank you everybody thank you very much ma'am.